What's up, guys? Welcome Hello. back to our channel. This is Chris, and I'm Angelina. For those Hello. of you who haven't seen us before, we basically cover all things self-publishing and entrepreneurship on this channel. So if you um, like what you see, go ahead and give us a subscribe and a like. But yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, today, sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, it's fine. Yeah, uh, so what we're covering today is how to get your uh, ebook narrated and actually put onto an aud the Audible platform. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Audible is Amazon's partner company, which is uh, which basically produces audiobooks and podcasts. And you can really, really easily get your ebook turned into an audiobook and yeah. then available for sale on Audible platform. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna show you today is basically how you can get it uh, narrated. Yeah, this is something you should definitely be doing. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. No, um, go, on, go on, You should definitely be doing this if you are a self-publisher because um, if you're not, you're kind of leaving money on the table. Audible is growing rapidly, so it's a great way to basically just get your book out there to an mm. even bigger audience. And once it's out, it's a company that you don't have to pay ads for. So it's not like Amazon or like Facebook or anything like that. You don't have to pay. You have to obviously pay to get it narrated. But once that's done, it's listed completely for free and you never yeah. have to pay for ads. So it's a great way to earn a bit of extra money, sometimes a lot of extra money. So, yeah. Yeah. And the uh, audiobook industries, I think I looked up um, before, is estimated to grow by like 26% year on year until 2030. So there's just so much scope yeah. for it to grow. And Amazon is the main supplier. I think it's like 60% market, market share. So it's you know, you've got so much scope to grow and there's so many different yeah. uh, little niches you can publish in. So it's gotta be done. Yeah. Uh, so how can we find a good narrator? Because good narrators are important to have. So we come on to ACX, which is, uh, if you've uh, self-published before, you'll know that KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, is where you upload your books. And then when they're approved, approved on there, then they're uploaded to Amazon, available mm -hmm. for sale. Uh, ACX is um, the equivalent to that for Audible. So you upload mm -hmm. your um, book to ACX, they approve it, and then it's available for sale on Audible. So what you have to do is you have to log in uh, to your account using your Amazon account. So it's gonna log in quickly here. And this is, the, this is the interface that you'll see when you first log on. And what you want to do, we haven't actually got one to claim at the moment. We've just <laughs> uh, just done one. We've just received auditions for it. But what you do is you come to the top left up here onto your name and click add your title. And then all you want to do here is type in the ASIN of your book. So you have an ASIN when you publish to Amazon, you'll get an ASIN for your ebook. Put it in here. And obviously I've just typed in the ASIN. So this is not our book. But what all you do, and we're not going to uh, take you through in this uh, in this video, but when we have another video, sorry, when we have another ebook to upload to Amazon, we'll take you through exactly how we claim it uh, each and every step. But all you have to do is click "This is my book," okay? And when you do that, then if you come to projects up here. So once you've claimed a book, basically it's gonna take you through a whole process of filling out basically just all the information about the book. So as you can see down here, it basically asks you all the different questions about this information and it will also ask you if you want to have auditions for your narrator or not. So you can obviously have people audition to narrate your book for you or you can just go look for them yourself, which we're gonna show you how to do. But basically you're gonna fill everything out. So as you can see here, we put that this was a nonfiction book for an English speaker. We'd prefer a male adult and then no specific accent necessarily, no specific vocal style, but basically ask you all these questions and you just have to fill it out based on what the genre of your book is and what you want your narrator to sound like. Yes, and, and then, then if you go on the auditions, we'll have some, so this is a book that, as I said, we did, we went through the stages for this is my book, and then we filled out all the information and then we received auditions for it. So these are the auditions we received. Exactly, so basically once they all start coming in, you can see we've got 40 auditions and you basically just, go through and listen to all of them and sort of filter out the ones you like and the ones you don't like. So for some reason, the button isn't showing up for us at the moment, but there's normally a button that says add to favorites and you can add all of the ones that you like to a separate list, basically like a short list, and then you can click on them and view those. That way you have a more um, succinct list of the ones you actually like. But basically that's how the auditions will come in. Oh yeah, and also once you've uh, got your favorite list here, so we actually uh, shortlisted seven of our favorites. What we then do is we go onto each of them. So we click on Richard Westgate, for example, here. And then he has an audio sample, which uh, obviously he's only got one here, but sometimes they have more than that. And then you can just listen to the audio sample and then kind of um, cross-reference that against uh, the sample, the audition that they gave for you. 
So if we just click this, for example. Where gratitude is the key to getting what you want, forgiveness is possibly the most important aspect of maintaining a healthy mindset. So why this is important is actually for two reasons. Okay, so obviously, first of all, you can listen to the audition to actually make sure it's the same as the sample. Because we had one recently it was where, not like it at all. yeah, the audition was really, really good. And when you went onto their, no, no, the audition was really, really bad. But when you went onto their sample pieces, it was completely different voices, really, really good sounding voice. So unfortunately, the uh, narrator was obviously <laughs> trying to put a farce on, on us and was just, you know, um, yeah, he also wasn't the real person. He was yeah. tr tr uh, uh, trying, trying to, to be. Earn a quick trying buck. To be. <laughs> yeah, so just be careful there. And and secondly, um, just making sure that you know he sounds or they sorry they sound good. Um, Make sure they're consistent as well because you don't want good. like yeah. they they may happen to for some reason give you a really good audition, but then the rest of them sound really bad. You just don't want to risk paying this narrator and then getting something back that you're not actually happy with in the end. So yeah, just be very wary of that. Yes. And then also uh, what we also do is look for this bold here. And this is showing you how much uh, it, this narrator charges for their services. So it's usually in, uh, I think, four or five brackets. There is um, per finished hour. So PFH here stands for per finished hour. So that's how much uh, Richard Westgate would charge you for every uh, completed hour of your audiobook. So for example, if you have a three hour audiobook, and I know it's only a range here, but let's say he charges 75 per finished hour, it'd be three times 75, which is $225 mm -hmm. for that finished audiobook. And there's, I think, four different bands. I think it's, they, they banned it between 50 to 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 400, and then 400 to it actually, thousand, Yeah, and it, it actually says when you are filling out the information to receive auditions, it asks you if you have a preference for... Yes. Uh, price range basically so you can try to filter out so that people who are either above or below your price range they'll see that you um, are looking for someone within that price range and they either will um, sorry they either won't audition if they know that they're not within your price range or they will if they are that way it just kind of helps filter out um, people outside of your price range basically yeah definitely and just a top tip we always stick between 50 to 100 dollars per hour per finished hour because you can get some absolutely amazing you probably sounded back probably listened to that guy then he sounded absolutely amazing for 50 to 100 dollars per finished hour and there are so many narrators out there looking for work uh, mm. that you receive so many auditions and yeah a lot of them won't be too good unfortunately but a lot of them are really really good we've had some auditions where we've pretty shortlisted like 15 or 20 yeah and you're gonna have some that will, be, will do for just 50 per finished hour which is not that much at all because if you can imagine that's only gonna be if you have a three-hour book $150. Yeah, you can make that back really easily on Audible, Brilliant especially enough. since you're not having to pay for ads. Like we said, it's just yeah, a no-brainer you, you to get very it onto quickly. Audible. Um, so another way that you can look for narrators, if you are getting a lot of auditions and you either just want to hear even more potential voices or you are not necessarily satisfied with the people who are um, auditioning, you can come over here to the little search tab and click on Producers for Hire. And then over here, you can basically, it'll literally show you every single, um, every single narrator that's on Audible. So you can see here, it says oh. there's 240,000 <laughs> samples. So obviously what you're going to do is on the filters on the side, you're basically just going to go through and filter out the ones that you want or don't want. So if you're looking for a specific genre, like people who... Um, cause uh, there are often, there, there's quite a big difference in narration, for example, between like nonfiction and fiction books because they sound very different. Like in story, in storybooks and novel books, you're telling, the narrator is literally telling a story. So it's much more, um, theatrical almost in a way. Yeah. And obviously nonfiction is just usually stuff that requires like a much more, yeah, like a voice that is just telling you what's going on, like an informational voice, I guess, if that makes yeah. sense. And um, it's, for example, yeah. it's going to be a lot different from like an erotica yeah. Uh, genre to like yeah, a non, or like a, a children's one. audiobook. Yeah, or like, <laughs> yeah, very um, different. So basically, yeah, you can go through and just uh, try to find whatever fits your book um, the closest. The closest. Um, and yeah, don't just go for the cheapest one as well. Make sure, yeah, make sure it really does fit your particular genre. Yeah, and make sure, yeah, make sure it actually sounds good. And like we said, go through all of their samples, not just the ones um, on the main page here. Again, you can filter it by gender. So if you're looking for, depending on what your book's about, say you're looking for female narrators. Um, now we're down to 6,000 samples, then you can keep going basically 
filter out everything that you want, accent, and then compensate compensation. So this, this is, is what we were saying. You filter. can, um, you can filter out the prices that you want. And this is also another very important yeah. point. So royalty share versus pay for pay for production. I don't really think there's any reason that we would ever recommend going for a royalty share. So what royalty share is is basically once you put the book out onto Audible you and the narrator will split royalties literally for the rest of the book's existence. So for the rest of the book's life, you're going to have to split in half the royalties of that book instead of just paying for it up front. So yeah. that's what pay for production is. You pay them the upfront cost and then you get all 100% of the royalties and you don't have to then ever give any of the royalties off to the narrator. So it makes sense from a business standpoint um, and just from a personal standpoint that you would just pay for it up front and that way you get to keep all of your royalties. I guess the only... Um uh, situation where we wouldn't recommend it is if you just don't have the finances you know if yeah. you really don't have the upfront cost to uh, put up 150 200 dollars to get it narrated then the royalty share the narrator will do it yeah. for free but then you have to split your profits yeah but as we said you know if you're only gonna be spending 200 dollars on getting it narrated uh, you'll be able to make that back easily within a couple of months yeah that's a great point though if you can't afford it then you could do royalty share and then use that money to then get your next book get your next book narrated um as a pay for production instead that's that's true so yeah so then say we just want to do again 50 to 100 you can also press multiple of these so if you want to just see different price ranges you still can but people often think if you go for the higher bands for the narrators you're going to get much much better narrator as i said you can get really good narrators for very very cheap yeah i think to an extent you can get better ones but if you just look hard enough you you can find them you'll find yeah um so then yeah guess what we'll do then once you've chosen your filters down the side you can really do the simple thing of just going through each and every um or a sample here and seeing yeah. if it would be a good fit for your uh narration or not yeah and there are a few important things to point out so you there are a couple things that you want to be listening for when you're actually um, vetting all of these different narrators and one of the main ones is obviously the voice you want to make sure that the voice fits for your niche for example if you're doing a stock market book it's probably mostly I mean men who are going to be listening and listening to and reading these books so you would most likely expect that you would have like a male voice for a book like this um, and you want something that would be quite like an authority figure so you want the voice to sound strong and you just want to make sure it fits or if you are, for example, doing a book about yoga, you'd probably have like a woman's voice because that could be quite calming and you just want it to obviously fit the niche. So that's one of the main things you want to look for. What's the next one? Yeah, also really important is actually the audio quality. Yes. So this is one thing that we are very, very particular with um, because imagine listening to an audiobook and it's muffly or it's not clear in the background or mm. keeps crackling up but the actual narrator has a brilliant voice, I couldn't listen to it. Yeah, it doesn't matter if the voice is good if the actual quality yeah. isn't like crisp and clear. <laughs> and sometimes we've had a uh, narrator who has been really, he's obviously a very, very good, or she's obviously a very, very good narrator, yeah. but it's just crackling in the background and it's not clear and it's echoey. Yeah. So that's something really important to look out for. Um, and also you don't really want someone who's got just a really boring, bland voice. Because yeah. if you're going to be listening to uh, an audiobook for, let's say, two hours, three hours, four hours, or even longer. It, you want it to be interesting. <laughs> it needs to be interesting. It needs to kind yeah. of captivate you. It can't be monotone. You want them to have like really good intono in intonations <laughs> and make sure that they can actually, yeah, just make it sound good instead of just like a really boring, like low key voice. That's definitely something you don't want. <laughs> yes. And the reason why narration is so important uh, for your audiobooks is, is twofold. Uh, let me just go over to Amazon sorry audible and let's just pick a book doesn't matter which one it is so how <laughs> oh it's called <laughs> donald trump that's funny okay so how uh, your audiobooks are, narrated, uh, are rated so if you've been following us for any length of time you know that we preach about reviews how important they are yeah. for your book success on amazon kdp it's no different on audible when someone is choosing an audiobook to listen to they're obviously going to read or they look at the cover read the description here but also they everyone's going to come down yeah. and actually read the reviews so you have three ratings for audible you have the overall rating which is obviously how they thought it was overall you have the performance and the story so the story is just how the book um, it was written basically that's that's on your end but the performance is actually how it was narrated yeah, so that's how it all, sounds that's the narrator so it's kind of like 50 percent or 33 percent 
is actually just on the narrator. Yeah. So if you have a really bad narrator, but a really, really good story, it's going to bring your over rating down yeah. and people are not going to want to listen to it. Yeah, exactly. And as Chris said, these, I mean, a lot of the books that are on Audible, like if you're doing, especially if you're doing higher content books, they're probably going to be around 25 to 30,000 words, even more. Um, and that will equate to about a three hour book and to listen to an annoying voice or a terrible um, audio quality for three hours like people are going to hear the samples and if it's not good they just won't buy it because nobody wants to sit through three hours of bad um, quality audio yeah that's, that's a really good point i was just going to mention that for the second point why it's so important is that the audio uh audio clip so you can try a sample here so most people 99 percent of people will listen to a sample before they actually buy for a surprise chat from the white house the good trump could be funny and fun to be around solicitous and engaged Able to okay. at least so most people will listen to a sample. There's actually a five-minute sample there. Ours aren't usually that long. But if you have a poor narrator, uh, people are just going to click off straight away and look mm. for another book, even if your content is so good. So that's why uh, picking a good narrator is so important. Um, and that's why you should do it through ACX. Yep. You can do it through other websites. But it yeah, costs loads of money. I think it's like we haven't ever done it. But a couple, hundreds, you know, 500, I think it's like... on. Um, Hot Ghost Rider, I think it's like 500 or the, up, the Urban Rider is like $500 yeah. to get it narrated. So go through ACX, you can get a really good value. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, that's how you it. can um, upload your book to ACX and then get it onto Audible. And then that's how you can also get auditions for your narrator and also go and vet other narrators yourself. So yeah, hopefully you guys found that helpful. And as we said in another video, we will take you through. Next time we have a book that we're actually going to be uploading, we'll make him into a note to actually yeah. go through and show you exactly how you can claim it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can follow the steps along. But hopefully that was helpful, guys. And if you're liking the content, guys, give us a like and also comment below what you want us to cover in future videos. It'd be really helpful to know, uh, to keep us on track, to, yeah. to make sure we keep providing good, valuable content to you. Um, so until next time, we'll see you then, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.